Welcome back to Squadron of Two, finally. Um, <laughs> this is uh, the last word on... Until uh, Dawn. Yeah, that game. So, uh, this is a new segment um. we've decided to try. Uh, when we finish a game, we're going to just do a little a review, basically. That's not really what our channel is primarily about. It's more of... Uh, a let's play channel than a review channel but um there's things we can't talk about while we're in the middle of playing the game uh just because there's too much going on and uh one of the things i learned from doing this was that making live commentary for games is kind of hard it's harder than <laughs> it looks sometimes you don't know what you really feel about a game until the, you get to the end and you can really look back at it on a whole and, and really look at it kind of as a big picture situation. Mm -hmm. So when we started out with this game, I kind of hated all of the characters. I really wanted to kill every single one of them. And I wanted and to kill every single one of them. we failed to do that. Well, because, like, somewhere in there, I started to kind of like a lot of them, and I didn't want them to die, and I was actually trying to keep them alive. Yeah. And that's an interesting thing. That that um, flip happened, and we didn't really... I didn't even really... I wasn't aware of the coming. moment yeah. when that happened. Mm -hmm. It was just all of a sudden, I'm like, I really am kind of sad that Matt got skewered on a hook. Got a brand new piercing. Yeah. For his throat. <laughs> that had to hurt. <laughs> and he has a new socket for a gold tooth. Because <laughs> I didn't notice when we played it that his tooth goes flying, which is... Yeah. Horrifying, really. Um, you really don't want to have to watch this stuff as often as we have to. <laughs> How did the idea for the last word come about? Uh, we, it was inspired by yeah. as much of the stuff that we do. Alcohol. That is not true. We actually rarely drink. I just want to say that. It's it's I start like our channel's starting to feel like Booze Cruise <laughs> Console Edition. Yeah. It's not that. <laughs> but as it happens. My good friend Felicia, whom I mentioned earlier in our Until Dawn uh, little playthrough. All right, the beginning, yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys played this. We started to play this. Yeah. Before, well, it was right after she came back from living in Detroit for quite a long time. And this drink was popular in Detroit during the Prohibition era. Um, and you should tell recently, them what the, what the drink is called. I will. Oh, sorry. I'm just like, leading <laughs> up to that. Um, and it was, it was, it's called The Last Word. And Which have, is very apropos. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, sort of inspired this whole idea. And it's gin, chartreuse, and luxardo maraschino liqueur, and lime juice. Yeah, all in equal parts. Mm -hmm. One to one to one to it's, one. So chartreuse is the sort of key element mm -hmm. to it. Um, and chartreuse, I guess, is French. It's made by... Carthusian monks? Yeah, some 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 vow of silence, habit-wearing motherfuckers. Three people know how to make it. It's a blend of 130 alpine herbs. Well, that's what the label said. <laughs> anyway, this drink was really popular in Detroit because of the fur trappers and all the French influence and all of that nonsense. <laughs> and then it kind of faded out of, out of the public eye and kind of became, came out of fashion. And it's been kind of rediscovered, I guess, recently. And people have been trying to kind of bring it back. And it's kind of gained a lot of popularity. Anyway, Felicia introduced me to it, and it's... What I think is interesting about it is it's one of those drinks where you keep drinking it going, geez, do I like this? Mm -hmm. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. Maybe it's I'm going to have to drink some more, <laughs> yeah. All right, I like it. It's very... It's not very... It's not super alcoholy, yeah. but it's not super sweet. No. It's, um, it's like sour... It's a little tart. It's got it's that like the, herbiness. It's like Sour Patch Kids minus all the sugar plus... Um, gin. Yeah. <laughs> the complexity so, of gin. And the gin we they recommend for this is Sapphire. Bombay Sapphire Bombay, East. Which has lemongrass in it, so it's a little it has a different. a couple extra herbs, and mm. because it's got those extra herbs, they say it goes really, really well with the chartreuse. Yeah. But you could make it probably with any gin, and it would probably taste very similar, to be con totally honest. We should just start a new yeah. channel about weird drinks. Well, we don't know that Just, much about This is the one weird drink that we make. We could expand. We could... There's the right. Well, you know, there. yeah, we have, you know, we have the <laughs> capability to do that. Anyway. So that's, that's what we're drinking. Mm -hmm. um, so this is we the should, last word. We should talk about the game. We should go back to talking about the game. Yeah. <laughs> which is why most people are here. Um, uh, well, yeah. So what did we learn from... Uh, what's this game called? Until Dawn! <laughs> 
<laughs> You've hardly had any of your last word. I am um, a lightweight, it's true. So, <laughs> it was really good about jump scares. There were lots of those. It was kind of great. Hundreds and hundreds of jump scares. Well, it's hard because also you ah! Jesus Christ! I'm scared. Yes. Oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Inferno for men! Oh, oh Jesus Christ! Oh. Ah! Oh. Birds! Oh. Is it a pumpkin? I don't know! Boy. Oh. oh shit, dude! Oh. Ah. oh god! Another jump scare? Run out of beer! Oh! Whoa! Oh shit! Shit! Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Oh! I don't know. Oh yeah, the dogs. Ow! Ah! Oh! Yeah. And I was really, I was, I'm not usually super susceptible to jump scares, but I, I was. Mm -hmm. um, I think because you're so, so into, like when I'm watching a movie, I'm like mm -hmm. kind of removed from it. And, and even you... though I'm maybe sympathetic to the characters on the screen, it's happening outside of my little and sphere. You have, you have no control over it. Yeah. But in this game, you're, you're vigilant for those quick time events and you're trying to, especially when you decided you wanted to save some of these characters. Yeah. Which I, did, I decided that I wanted to do that too at some point. Uh, you're looking for every, you, you really wanted to look for every little thing you possibly could find. Yeah. And that was, that, that was, um, that definitely amps up the tension. And that's one thing I think the game, the game did really well was it built tension really slowly. And we had like four antagonists and then the twist was only one of them was actually real. Right. And that was interesting. I yeah. Yeah. And yeah, because you're controlling the character, mm -hmm. you're like physically kind of connected to that mm -hmm. character in a weird way. So oh, when happens. something happens to that character, it it feels a little bit like it happens to you. Yeah. And so it's a lot more immediate and a lot more and visceral. That's a thing that I think only games can do. Yeah, Because I think you so too. have more agency than you do when you just watch a movie. You're just passively taking the movie in. Or when you read a book, there's no way to right. change the book as you go. Which kind of leads us into one of the major subtopics we were going to talk about, which is the butterfly effect kind of... The mechanics. ...mechanic that sort of drives this whole story. Mm -hmm. I felt like the but having the butterfly ring explode in your face and having all these like things laid out for you in a way that was really uh, in your face, kind of pulled you out of the, of the experience a little bit and was a little bit uh, immersion breaking. And I feel like if we didn't have those, if that was just a, in the background, you could look at it whenever you wanted to, it didn't have a, like a butterfly effect thing or like a slow down time and have the character like make a decision making face when you picked a thing. Like that, that was, having that be gone would be, great like i'd love to play this game again like that without those things there but at first it really bugged me and then as we kept going i just kind of forgot it was there and i just the yeah. butterfly effect thing going off didn't really bug me anymore i was really more interested in seeing where um what happened next but you're right i mean the the butterfly exploding in the corner is really redundant because like you know when you're making a choice and it doesn't not every choice you make triggers a butterfly effect. Right. But it doesn't matter because you still have to make them. And I think it would be good, like, there is that page that we've shown a couple times where you can go into the menu and see, all the possible... and see what you've chosen that has affected something else in the game. Right. So you can choose to do that or not. Right. And I like, I like when games give you choices like that. Mm -hmm. And when they don't... So I think I think you're absolutely right. I think the butterfly thing is completely redundant. And, and the totems are kind of silly. You're just finding totems on the ground that do that show and, you the future. And they don't really change anything. They don't they don't give you enough information to necessarily guide your decision. Exactly. Really. It should be it should be it should be apparent from the what's going on that you're making an important choice. And it is apparent from what's going on that you're making an important choice. And if you're not paying attention, 
then you're going to suffer. Your characters mm-hmm. are going to get killed. They're going to have, you know... And that's exactly what's going to happen without the totem mechanics and without the butterfly thing going off in your face. Um, so, anyway, that was my primary criticism yeah. of Until Dawn. Um, I thought the story was actually pretty good. Yeah. I thought it built up really well. I thought it went from, like, kind of just silly oh, kids getting yeah. together, then there was this what? prank, and then people... Slasher movie set up. ...seemed to die. Yeah. You think you know who the bad guy is. There's this weird flamethrower creepy guy. There's a clown mask guy. And then, and then yeah, they come back, and then there's weird clown mask guy. Which I, I think I want to mention uh, real quick that I think some of the variables in the story change based on what you pick in that one scene with Dr. Hill. Because I've seen videos of this game where there's not a clown face guy, there's a zombie face guy. Really? So if you pick a zombie as your scariest thing, it'll make that be oh. Josh's outfit. But it'll still be Josh. It'll still be different. Right. It'll, 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 right. Not different. It'll also be him playing a, essentially a hugely elaborate prank on his friends. Which um, I would love to see this kind of game in a different setting. Like a sci-fi setting or a, even a um, high fantasy setting. I think the game that Supermassive made after this was a police procedural, uh, which was VR only or something, so we're not going to play that one. But um, Not that VR is bad, but I just I don't want to do VR. Um, I'd love to see this... I'd love to see it used... I'd love to see more games like this that aren't from the people who made uh, Heavy Rain or whatever. That's the only other game... There's the only other company I can think of who makes games like these that... that that has done a lot of them. Like, they did um, Indigo Prophecy and Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, and they're doing something with, like, a almost like a Deus Ex-style Detroit game. Detroit Be oh, Human or some become, shit. Oh, Become Human Yeah, which I, I, yeah. I, I, I I've seen... I, those games look really cool when I see the trailers, and then I see videos of people playing them, and they're, the dialogue is A little awkward. bit disappointing, yeah. They're disappointing, yeah, especially, especially Indigo Prophecy I was very disappointed in, because mm. uh, of the forced stealth sections and uh, the nonsensical story. Uh, puzzle solving was great, the flow was great, dialogue was good in places, the music was good. You know, I, I, This game didn't have any of those problems, I thought. I thought the music and pacing and atmosphere were great. Uh, you know, just needed a little bit, toned down the mechanics a little bit, like we just said. So. Yeah. I will say, in terms of the actual gameplay, and this, you know, we mentioned a little bit, I think we cut this part out, because mm-hmm. um, it wasn't necessarily relevant. relevant to the actual episode, but it feels sometimes extremely clunky, controlling the characters. You bump into a lot of walls, and it's hard to see in spots. Yeah, it's so um, dark. I mean, we actually, I started cranking up somewhere in the middle for the um, for the videos, I would crank up in the editing. I would crank mm-hmm. the the well, contrast. When we were playing it, sometimes it was impossible to see stuff. Yeah, yeah. Even even when things like interactable things were glowing in the corners, I yeah. mean, missed some. We uh, definitely did. Yeah. Um, and I can't believe I flubbed that last. Don't move. Oh man! Thing and got sand. The and don't pale. move is the worst. Oh, the worst man. mechanic. Yeah, yeah. it's I mean, so hard. The way to get around, the way, the way to get through it, I thought was to just put the thing down. But if you yeah. don't put the thing down fast and put the controller down. If it so comes it on you too fast, like, well, putting it down is going to be moving it, yeah. so you're you're screwed. You're yeah. yeah, so that's what happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, sometimes the QTE things are hard to see. In yeah, time. like they pop up in the background. They're a little, mm. little, little, and we had the maybe it's easier if you have the sound turn all the way up, but because we didn't want to have any feedback. Yeah. Yeah, because we had a problem with we have a problem with audio ba- balancing in general because we're recording on our couch, uh, which is not a stu- <laughs> which is not a sound studio at all. Um, we, there's probably like a tick 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 tick. There might to, be an audio mm-hmm. cue to let you know that that's happening, but we missed that one with the bat and Sam. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't see that one until it was already turning red, and I was like, "Oh wow, there was a QT right there." I'm still no haunted idea. by leaving Josh hanging on that high five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Josh hanging on that high five. That's why he died. Probably. If you just if you just hit that high five, yeah. Chain of events Friends unfolds. Friends forever. Yeah, and chain then, of events yeah. unfolds where Josh does not get his head crushed in by his own zombified. He doesn't fall sister. into a horrible state of depression because Sam high fived me and everything's Yay. fine now. Actually, that might be a thing because remember, there's stats for each character tracking their like sanity, which I paid zero attention <laughs> yeah, to. We didn't look at time. anybody's stats ever. <laughs> no, we did not care. But we were wondering if maybe some of that clunkiness was was sort of 
purposely done to make you feel the tension a little bit more. <laughs> I bet the janky controls are on purpose. Anyone I bet it's supposed Ashley? to be to make you feel less in control. And... Yeah. Or there just was no better way to control the... the or it was just poorly done. Yeah. It's hard to know. <laughs> <laughs> or there's just, there's just no, there's no better way to, to yeah. do it, really. I mean, because the camera angles are constantly changing through rooms. It's hard to tell, like, what the space you're walking through is really like. Yeah. Because the camera angle keeps changing, and usually I don't have a problem with that, but um, it would change in ways that didn't make a ton of sense to, to me at the time. Like, when you're in the... When you're, just, when you're playing as Mike, and you're going into the asylum... To where all the Wendigos, Wendigos, Wendigos? Whatever, who knows. <laughs> we never figured it out. I heard them say it a million times. I, I'm still they were sure. saying Wendigos. Okay, well. But I'm pretty sure I've heard Wendigos. I've heard, heard Wendigo and Supernatch. That's yeah. what I've always called that It might be one of those, there's a restaurant Nearby. locally yep. called the Wendigo. The Wendigo. Digo. The Wendigo. Wendigo. Um, it might be one of those words that has two accepted transliterations tra uh, pronunciations yeah yeah um anyway okay so um are we ready to move on to awards <laughs> we're borrowing slash stealing this concept we should from, from from game dungeon by ross scott he has cool little art things and and funny awards rather than like blah 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 out of 10 or whatever uh he has these like three little awards sometimes yeah. for games. Sometimes it's just one. And he comes up with really nice little graphics and weird. Not just fans do contribute that. them. Oh, hint, yeah. hint, fans. <laughs> <laughs> All nine of you. <laughs> Which is more than I had before. When we, yeah, we before, love you. More, it's more than we had before we started this channel. So, uh, no, thank you for seriously. Thank you for listening. Even though there aren't very many of you, and that's totally fine. We 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 loved making this. It's, we, lo it's, we love making this show. It's quality, not quantity. Exactly. Um, so, but we're going to just shout out our, our awards yep. here. Um, First award is Uncanny Valley, because the faces look weird sometimes. It has actually, I love the visuals in this game. I think it's beautiful. I love the cinematic nature of it. However, there's still this one little hump that it seems like they just have to kind of figure out, they and make, that's the mouths. They make goofy mouths sometimes. They're goofy mouths. Yep. I mean, what are you going to do? Yep. Uh, um, second award, Towel of the Year. Yep, Sam's Towel. Sam wears that towel. Forever. She runs away from a killer, well, what she thinks is a killer at the time, climbs under beds, runs around. I have never executed a towel tuck that will hold past me combing my hair out. I never executed a towel tuck that will hold past me taking three steps. <laughs> So, <laughs> and I was only doing my waist. I mean, you know, because I'm a dude. You know, no one gives a shit about, you know, dudes, dude boobs. No one cares that those are out. So I never tried to do the whole full-blown It is not neck easy. down towel tuck thing. But so, I've tried the waist, and I have not succeeded my entire life. And I'm 30-plus years old. So. It's some kind of magic towel. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's black magic. And that's the real, the real villain in Until Dawn. <laughs> Is the is the mage, the necromancer who makes the towel thing happen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, I would just like to shout out that we. I keep saying that all the time. Shout out doesn't even make yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone remembers. I think it was episode ten. Nine. Flavor Tree, I think, or the one right after. Maybe. Yeah. We made a weird joke that maybe no one got. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. <laughs> that's not how it goes. Not a great joke for. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. A little ray of hope. We have four flavors of ice cream: vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, or people. What was that last one? Chocolate. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's how it goes. It's really not. It's not uh, relevant. It's not I'm relevant sorry. to this game at all. No. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even I've never actually seen the original content that leads to this joke, but Adric does this joke all the time. I love it. It's my favorite joke it's from, from Family, Family Guy. Guy. Yeah. So here's here's the setup. It's in season one, I think. We should have looked this up before recording this. Maybe well, we'll put it we'll put the actual information. I get to do another pedantic <laughs> annotation. <laughs> season one, episode I don't know, five something. 
<laughs> something that you said triggered it mm-hmm. in me, and so I immediately did that because it comes up a weirdly frequent <laughs> number of times in daily. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I, we were like, well, that's it doesn't have any bearing on anything. No, As no, it I'm... turns out, mm. cannibalism, a large factor in this in game, game, which, which we, we did not realize not at the time. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. It was a sort of prescient. Yep. Okay. Mm. Well, do you have any last, last words about <laughs> Until Dawn? <laughs> uh, well, I guess um, we should... We should take a look back at those we lost. So should we say goodbye? I guess to Until Dawn. Yeah, we're gonna miss you, Until Dawn. You're yeah. our first the finished first, the game. The first game we went all the way through for our channel. And, uh, yeah. And we just want to thank everybody again for watching, and I hope uh, you got some entertainment value from our channel, from our from our little our little show. Uh, we'd love to take more requests. Until Dawn was a request from my dad, which is weird. Because uh, he would never play a game like this, because he doesn't play games at all anymore, really. But it turns um, out it was really, it, it worked really well for it was, the show. I think it was, it was fun. fun. Yeah, it was absolutely totally fun. Um, helps that it was short. <laughs> it was short. It was very cinematic. So mm-hmm. it, you know, if mm-hmm. we didn't have a lot to say, you could couldn't sort talk of talk over them that much. It was a little bit wanna... tricky because yeah, you <laughs> wanted to sort of let the dialogue and the story come through. Yeah, I and mean, we definitely want the game to be center stage in, our, in, in yeah. the things we make because. It's not really about us. It's about the game. It's about why games are important. Right. And why we play them. That's the last word yeah. for Until Dawn. And um, again, thank you all for watching. Very much. Let us know what you think of our commentary and of our, of our, of our, of our production. We're always interested in hearing ways we can improve. Also, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe things like you're supposed <laughs> to do. Like I almost never do. I think that's about all. Do we want to mention Aunt Joanne? Oh, I guess we could talk about why it's been. There's a little, yeah, we had a death in the family. We had a little lull here Mm -hmm. in recording. Part of that was because we got Far Cry 5 and we couldn't set the microphone up fast enough. (laughs) And we both ended up playing through almost an entire playthrough of the game. Yeah, in like a week. In like a week. Yeah. Um, But the other reason is because there's been, yeah, um, someone really close to me, uh, my godmother, was very sick. And she passed away. So I've just been taking, we've been taking some time. Yep. So thanks for being patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're back. And uh, hopefully we'll have this up in the next couple days. And um, we're going to hopefully have Far Cry up very soon thereafter. Yeah. If not the same day. Yeah. So. We are Squadron of Two. Squadron of Two. Thank you for watching. <laughs>